I am Anthony from Hashlessnet, and you're watching 10 Questions. Today, I am here with uh, Lawrence, also known as Maseko X, who creates Dragon Ball-related content on YouTube. Hey, Maseko X. Hi. Hi, Anthony. Good, good to be here. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. So I have 10 questions for you. I ask everybody these same 10 questions with some variation. And if we have to, we'll, we'll do some follow-ups. But the first question is, what entertained you while you were growing up? Oh, oh, okay. Well, uh, being from the UK, I had a lot of uh, a lot of things that are very intrinsically British growing up. There were American cartoons, sure. One of the ones that I remember fondly is uh, Beetlejuice, so the animated series from back in the day. Then, of course, I had Cartoon Network for a, you know a period. So, but obviously, it was like the Flintstones, Jetsons, all that kind of stuff. And one I remember quite fondly is uh, the raccoons from, that's a Canadian one, but that was like a, something I really remember fondly. Sounds like but a then they were like, show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it is. It, it's a, um, the, the, the ending song is just so iconic. But uh, I loved like things like uh, the Bass Street Kids, Penny Crayon, the Family Ness, all these, Count Duckula, oh, which I remember uh, Count Danger Duckula. Mouse. Yeah, with a uh, David Jason doing a lot of the main character voices. Yeah, because it was on Nickelodeon here, like really early in the morning. Oh yeah, I can imagine. So it's very much like that kind of stuff. But then there was like stuff like a uh, nightmare, which is very, very popular in the eighties. It was like a using green screen and early CGI and animation. You're you're in a dungeon. You have the dungeon master, and you have to guide this guy who can't see throughout this very janky eighties kind of like green screen room but it's actually a castle so that kind of stuff so to describe it various <laughs> various things okay so um obviously at some point and here's a follow-up at some point you got into dragon ball right yes around about 2000 because that's when it really came out on the in the uk on cartoon network there yeah because um, we got international channel back in the mid 90s and i remember we started watching in japanese with no subtitles, um, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and then Dragon Ball GT in that order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was able to go uh, further ahead than Cartoon Network was doing. I remember um, well, we were watching the Boo Saga while um, the Saiyan Saga was in English because the international yeah. channel was so far ahead. Yeah. That must have been really trippy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, well, and again, no subtitles. So we understand nothing. And then it kicked into GT. And um, we're we're probably still about um, just early um, Android Saga, and totally mm. lost because again we can't understand anything. Um, yeah. Okay, so what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Well, um, I had a YouTube channel from about like 2006, and I worked with a chap called Brandon Rainsford on a thing called Naruto the Abridged series because. There was a guy, Martin Billany, who did uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. And I had a YouTube channel, and I wanted to put Naruto Abridged on there. So we did that, but then, you know, we kind of moved on, and then we put some more episodes on Vegeta's channel. So we kind of did that, but I just wanted to have a YouTube channel because YouTube was brand new, and it was like, oh, cool, streaming video, how novel? Because this was around, like, 2005, 2006. And a lot of fan dubs that I used to be working on the Voice Acting Alliance, which is where I started doing voice acting, it all kind of worked from there. So having a YouTube account sort of helped. So it was just mainly that was when I actually got the account. But the channel as people know it today really started at the beginning of 2016 because that was when I was thinking, you know what, I really should focus on making content on that channel and making content I like to make just to have it because I had about 25,000 subscribers on there already and I was like you know what I should really actually do something with them so I made stuff like that and then I did like an editorial about Super Saiyan 3 is dumb and stuff like that I did an editorial and that really resonated with people and within a month I gained, went from 25 no 50,000 subscribers to over 100,000 well, I doubled it in a month what purpose is a five minute transformation for Pete's sake I mean Oh, because I, I remember watching the Boo saga and Gotenks finally learns how to do the form, goes to fight Boo and then just totally breaks out of the form. And I'm like, why? It just uses too much power. And that was mainly just for comedic sake. It's like, oh, hey, a grown adult can go Super Saiyan 3. How about an overpowered, really arrogant kid? That would be fun. 
Yeah, because uh, recently, speaking of Super Saiyan, you were talking about the ideal Super Saiyan 5, and um, yeah. you were talking about um, AF, which um, I knew wasn't legit back when it first came out. Uh, but people were like, oh, no, you don't know. And I'm like, but it, it doesn't look like Pariyama. It, it, it looks like some guy just penciled it in. Uh, but everybody was like, oh, AF is real. It's coming to TV. And I, at this point, I think GT had just ended. Mm. And so a whole lot of people are jumping on that bandwagon. I'm like, no, no, this, this doesn't feel right. But then you, you you talk about it, and then you do your, your, your ideal Super Saiyan 5. And I watched it yesterday, and I'm like, yes, that is what Super Saiyan 5 should be. Yeah, no, exactly. Because with that video, it was like going off the back and saying, I am not wanting people to disown that that design because that design is very important with the development of the fan culture of Dragon Ball. It's very it's it's a very treasured part of it. So it should be cherished. And the uh David Franco, the guy who designed it, that is actually not even Goku. It's his OC in that form. And it's not even Super Saiyan 5. It, there's a lot of different things about it. It's so nuanced. But back in the days of the early, yeah, the late '90s on the internet, where you were lucky to have a, a, a an image that was about 300 pixels tall, maybe if you're lucky, and dial up if again if you're lucky to have that. That's what you got. So what you had pretty much was like it was gospel essentially. So it was something that a lot of people, as you say, embraced and clung to as being real. So. Doing that video was really cathartic because it was like, well, okay, let's say, for example, that there's a product called Super Dragon Ball Heroes, right? And it's, that's that place where you want to have some really bonkers things like Super Saiyan 4 Broly and Super Saiyan 3 Trunks. Yeah, you can have it. Go ham. Go nuts. So this is the kind of thing I think, well, Heroes isn't really gone that crazy. What you could do is have Super Saiyan 5, something that is truly unique to that show. As in, that's the only place you can find it. So that's why I did that video. But yeah, those kind of discussions is, are something I love doing. Just to kind of really go off the back of the what ifs and come up with something and create a character, create something that would work in a story, that kind of stuff. Yeah, because um, Heroes is is kind of, kind of just like it is fan service. Uh, so they're doing oh, some yeah. they're doing combinations that are. I I just want to see Tiensha, and I have I I, I just Tiensha needs to happen and it needs to go somewhere. Oh yeah, of course. Because you did talk I mean, about Tiensha in a recent video, and I'm like, yeah, that would have been great for the the tournament of power. Oh, of course, absolutely. Because like. Yeah, Tiensha is something novel and something different, and it gives them something to do, just to kind of lump them in there. Although I remember they lightly touched on, and I think this was in Super, or maybe it was in the end of Z, where they were like, um, the thought of Goku, uh, where, <laughs> yeah, Goku imagined merging with Hercule or Hercule oh, imagined yeah. or something, and then, uh, yeah, so I, I always thought that, that that would just be, uh, that would be like, anybody fusing and becoming the fat version it's just it's it's not very powerful it's uh it's comic it's comedic oh, of course but um, yeah sometimes a draggable you have to remember that it is a comedy as well so you mentioned your first um uh, offering on your channel in the new current format was a discussion on super saiyan 3 um in those early days of 2016 you know nearly four years ago uh, back when you were yeah. younger and could you know your knees won't crack when you stand up or whatever um because I'm getting that problem now. Um, well, I had to be fair. I'm like 33, <laughs> so I'm like I'm not. Uh, I don't. I'm not as young as you think. As people think I am. So I would have been like 29. So I was like relatively old in the game. Because we started doing this abridging thing when I was like 20. So I've been doing this stuff for like 13 years, man. So it's been a long time. So, so but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we're both old. I got you. Thanks. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm just saying. Don't worry about it. It's it's all it's all good. You know we have experience. Uh, so um, in more recent in the last couple of years, you've kind of done uh, the what ifs, and then you scrolled you yeah. know, rolled out into those, and those seem to be dominating your channel. But mm. uh, back in the 2016, 2017, what was the the bulk of your stories? Your um, what ifs? Well, you didn't do what ifs, but I mean, you did. Um, you, again, Super Saiyan three is is not necessary. Yeah. Uh, what what was it? basically looking at the series and going, well, they could have done this differently. Was it just mostly critiquing? Because you did mention uh, yeah. editorializing it. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, do you hmm. have some favorite features or discussions you had back in those early days? 
Oh yeah, I did. Okay, I did do a what if per se, but I didn't. It wasn't like a story, as it were. It was mainly what what asking what if the DBZ movies were canon, as in like okay, how could you combine the movies into the actual story into the TV series? Because the laws are very very different, save for maybe a couple of the movies, like the Cooler movie and Movie Nine, the Bo Jack movie. They're the two most likely to be canon. As it were, they they fit the best into the story. Yeah, Maybe Lord, movie thirteen as well, because right. that's after afterwards. Right, because the Lord Sled movie, like Goku goes Super Saiyan for the first time in a movie, and uh, you, they don't call it that, and so that kind of throws things off if you try to put that one into the the timeline. It was actually meant to be Super Saiyan, but unfortunately, it was before Super Saiyan even came out in the series, so nobody really knew. Not even Toriyama knew what it was meant to look like. I think he was just like thinking just along lines of, oh, it's just a powered up angry Goku. That that was it. Mm. So it was the first did, rage have... form. Yeah, exactly. So it was just like, yeah, he is a super Saiyan, uh, not a super Saiyan in that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, what trends have you seen change with your content um, since you started your channel? Now, obviously, you've you've gone heavy into the what ifs, but is there any other thing you've you've decided to do more recently that uh, you you didn't think of initially? Well, I suppose it would have to really be the what ifs because the what ifs nowadays I'm kind of going a bit more I'm going a bit more thematic because before it would mainly just be like oh this 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 and this happens. Now I include having bits of dialogue in there and doing the voices for them using my voice acting you know, experience. So I kind of like come up with facsimiles of characters. I don't claim for them to be definitive voices. Like, say, if I just want to be Vegeta, I just kind of convey that and people get that's Vegeta. I don't know if I just want to be Piccolo. I just kind of like do that. So just things that people would recognize. Oh, OK, that, that, that's Piccolo talking. OK, right, right. And also... You know, voicing Goku as well, that kind of thing. So people go, oh, hey, it's the DBCA Goku, nice. So it's just, it adds a bit of an extra texture in a way. Just something, it gives something people to get stuck into and kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to go for in terms of the theme and scene were. So that's gone down really well. People kind of really get involved in the stories more. So just adapting the what if workflow in a way. Which that the what if is probably bringing a lot more people to your channel than uh, other things before. Yeah. I, I haven't been keeping track of your numbers. <clears throat> but, there are uh, lot, there are lots. Yeah, right. Okay, so you do the voice uh, bits in your stories because I when I was little, uh, like in kindergarten and stuff, the teacher would always read the book and do little voices for each character. Oh yeah, and so you're basically doing that. It adds an extra layer to it. Right. So what changes do you have planned for your YouTube channel in the future? I mean, because you got what ifs right now, but what's next? Um, well, I've, I'm working with my wife on a special project to do with the Tournament of Power. Like, people may not have been happy with the way the Tournament of Power worked, so we're coming up with, like, some kind of special bingo tournament. So, like, we're having, like, a make it into a little game show. So <laughs> people, people can vote who survives the Tournament of Power. It was like a bracket system, like for the, the, the NCAA or whatever. Yeah, but just using YouTube polls. So that means people can actually choose. And the numbers are, that are generated from the bingo machine are actually all randomized. So it's not just in order of universes. It's all like we looked at all the statistics and we've made random numbers so everything's all scattered out. So, you know, it's a bit less predictable. So you're so saying, looking forward to that. Right. So you're saying two people from the same universe could inevitably end up against each other. Yeah, of course, certainly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what changes would you like to make if you had unlimited resources? Oh, if I could, and I've said this to myself, if I ever got a million subscribers, I would find the license to an anime that's long expired and dub it. Like, <laughs> of an anime, distribute it, do that, all that kind of stuff. That's what I want to do when I hit a million. So, <clears throat> or if I ever hit a million. That or that or find the Renault 5 Turbo, the Gordini version that Bulma has in the first episode of Dragon Ball and find it and restore it and make it look like her car. Okay, I was like, wait a minute, is that the car? Yeah, okay, that is the car. It's a Renault 5 Turbo. 
Yeah, it's an actual car. I it's it's European, obviously, because I have never seen it. Yeah, no, it's it the car in episode one of Dragon Ball. That's the actual car. Wow. Okay. It's the it's a special edition of that car, so and it goes for about like a hundred thousand dollars. So I'm a bit like. I need to find a broken down one. That sounds like a stretch and, goal on like Patreon, like hundred thousand dollar donation. You can buy this car for me. Well, basically, that that's kind of almost all I want to do. I'd either like sell it on to somebody who wants it, or have that touring around like the country and show it off at like conventions. Have your face on the side, or the little icon you use. Have it on the side of the panels on the doors and. Oh no no! This would be something that is looks one hundred percent identical to the show. Oh right, you're straight up matching it. Okay, it'd be a straight up match for Bulma's car. Okay, so um, do you have programming in other outlets, and where can f people find you in social media? So I, I know you have the website, you have the the Twitter, you have the uh, Patreon, and of course your YouTube channel. Uh, is there anything yeah. else you would like to promote? Well, I have an Instagram. That's just real Masako underscore X. I just post random pictures I do on my travels and stuff like that, and sometimes my cat. Uh, then I have a Twitch, but I don't often stream on there lately. It's just because of work, as it were. Um, and then that's pretty much it, really. I just got the basics and all that kind of stuff. Do you wish to mention anything else about your channel? Um. Well, all I can say really is just just keep on watching this space because I do come up with very bold what ifs now, and up coming soon is an April Fool what if. So every year, I do a a what if that is has basically no rules, as in we can go totally nuts. This is these are the ones where you can have the utmost strangest stories. Like I did a what if the original Broly turned good, and what if Mister Satan trained like Goku. And stuff like that. And you're, you're so still stuff doing that you think those. Would... Oh yeah, I'm still doing them because they're popular. But I start them off on April the 1st. So that means I can still carry on with them. Because I was like thinking to myself, um, like uh, you have a schedule, right? Because you, you seem to release regularly. Yes. So what yes, is your weekly schedule then? Uh, three videos a week. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Tuesday and Saturday is the what ifs. Thursdays are discussions. And then I have a weekly roundtable live stream. So I do a stream with my friends Haverock and Sophie B. They are also very big Dragon Ball experts. And we take in user-submitted what-ifs. That helps support the channel. But it also allows us to have a bit of a dialogue. We then come up with our own in-jokes with the audience. So we kind of like, it just come up with different, different stories. And if we get really good ideas, then we save them, make a note of them, and we actually make them into a video. So it's, oh. it's generating ideas and engaging with the audience. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for your time. And um, for everybody else, again, check out uh, Maseko X's Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, website, and YouTube. I will put more information into the description. And thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.